So this morning, I want to continue with our teachings that we spoke two weeks ago, the baptism of fire, the baptism of fire. Amen? Some of you are going through fire. Some of you are, uh, have just come out of fire. Some of you will be going through your fire because fire has been designed for every believer. Every one of you in this room, including Mama Nila and I, amen, a fire has been designed for our life. But I want to just read a story to you. During the tour of an, of an aircraft carrier, the jet fighter pilot explained that planes need a 56 Kilometer, kilometer per hour wind to take off such, on a, such a short runaway. To reach the steady breeze, the captain turns his ship towards the wind. Shouldn't the wind come from the plane's back? One of them asked. The pilot said, no. These fighter jets must fly into the wind. That's the only way they achieve a lift. These fighter jets, jets must fly into the wind at a 56 kilometer per wind rate for them to achieve their lift. My lift, your lift, to soar and to break the law of gravity comes when we fly into the wind. Tell your neighbor, fly into the wind. Say, to tell your neighbor, don't avoid the wind. Don't avoid the storm. Fly into the wind. And you will achieve your lift. It's so quietly said, as if you don't believe what I said. Tell your neighbor, fly into the wind to achieve your lift. Amen. So many of us want to escape suffering. So many of us want to escape pain. We don't want to deal with pain. We don't want to deal with suffering. We don't want to deal with death. We don't want to deal with unemployment. We don't want to deal with tests and trials. We don't want hardship and affliction. Amen. But I came to encourage you today, like I encouraged you two weeks ago, that suffering, pain, test, trials, hardship, affliction, death, is part of the believer's process for growth, for maturity, for sanctification, and for your faith to be tested, and for your faith to be tried. I said a week ago, we read Isaiah 54 verse 16, and, and, and Isaiah writes, Behold, I have created the blacksmith, who fans the coal into the flame and forges a weapon for his work. You are a weapon that's being shaped for the master's use. You are a vessel that's being shaped for the use of God, our creator. But for God to shape you, for God to mold you, for God to sanctify you, for God to make you a vessel that will bring glory and honor to his name. You've got to go. Tell your neighbor, you've got to go through fire. Come and say it aloud. Tell your neighbor, neighbor, for God to shape you, for God to make you a vessel of honor, of honor and glory, and glory. God, allows God allows for you to go through fire. Then we read the other scripture in Luke chapter 3 verse 16 and it says 
It says, um, when we are being baptized, Luke 3, 16, when we are being baptized in fire, it's Jesus who holds the fan in his hand. Amen? To fan the flame so that he can thoroughly purge the threshing floor. So on 8th of, on 8th of February, Bishop Gans confirmed of much what I said in the previous meeting. But I spoke on the baptism of fire. But he taught on it is good that I was afflicted. Amen. And he ministered from Psalms 119 verse 71. It was good for me to be afflicted so that I might learn your decrees. Then he defined the word good and afflicted. Good means pleasurable, admirable, pleasing, superior, and positive qualities. And then he explained the word affliction from an Hebrew term. And the Hebrew word for affliction means browbeaten, troubled, abased, chastened, defiled, hurt, humbled, weakened, and depressed. So when you put the two words together into a sentence and then it reads, it was good, pleasurable, pleasing. For me to be browbeaten, troubled, chastened, and hurt of the Lord. Sounds confusing. Am I right? So David is saying, it was good that I was afflicted. It was good that God troubled me. It was good that God chastened me. Because the Bible says in whom Hebrew... The book of Hebrews says, whom God loves, he, he chastises. Amen? But your chastisement is only for a little while. Amen? Whom God loves. So, so David is writing, he says, it was good that I was afflicted. It was good that I was troubled. It was good. Good that God chastised me. That I went through my suffering. Most Now this teaching is going to throw off the grace and the prosperity message. Because you love prosperity. All we know God bless me. God bless me. God will bless me. God will do this for me. God will promote me. God will bless me financially. Amen. Amen. But when God permits, when God allows you and I to go through fire, then it's the devil. Many a times, it's not the devil. Amen? It's not the devil. It's God allowing you. Amen. Psalms 119 verse 67 says, Before I was afflicted, I went astray, but now I have kept your word. You see, affliction is allowed by God to keep you in line with your Christian faith. Because many of us, you will not pray if there's no affliction. Many of you would have backslidden and gone back to the world if God never allowed affliction to come upon your life. Because the Bible says, before I was afflicted, I went astray. Many of us, even in this room this morning, we are cold. We are not hot for God. We don't serve God the way we should serve God. Amen? And God knows your God given potential for worship and God loves you more than you love yourself 
And God has prepared eternity and heaven for you. And so the Bible says, for you to enter into his eternal rest and for you not to backslide, get cold in the faith. For God to shape you and form you into a vessel that will bring glory and honor to his name. He says, I've got to allow fire. Amen. In verse 75 of 119, chapter Psalms 119 verse 75 says, O Lord, I know that your judgment is right and that in your faithfulness you afflicted me. Amen? Amen? God is not unjust. God is not unfair. God is not cruel or unkind. God is faithful. Tell your neighbor God is faithful. So it is in his faithfulness because he loves you, he will allow you to go through affliction. As gold is purified by fire, so is our faith and our character tested by trials and afflictions. Job, the Old Testament hero of faith, understood this picture very well. It was after his horrendous trial, which was beyond anything that you and I could ever imagine or experience. He testifies in Job chapter 23 verse 10. He says, and you know where I am going. When you have tested me, I shall come forth as pure gold. Amen. Amen. God wants to see you being shaped and being formed into pure gold. And Job writes, he says, you know where I am going. You know my destinations. You know how to navigate my life. And therefore, because you want to make me into an instrument and you want to make me into pure gold, you have tested me through fire. When a goldsmith wants to purify raw gold into pure gold, he puts his crude gold into a crucible that is fire. He subjects that crucible into intense heat. And thus the heat liquefies the mass. As the mass of gold is liquefied, the impurities in the gold rises to the surface. The goldsmith scrapes out the impurities and puts back the gold into fire until all of the impurities are scraped out and burnt out. When the blacksmith sees his face, when he sees the true reflection of his face in the gold, then he knows that the gold has been perfected. And I want to tell you this morning that Christ wants to see himself in and through you. And as long as your image is marred, it's going to put you into fire. As long as your image is not reflecting the image of Christ, you are going to go through fire. Amen? Amen? You will only come out of the fire when his perfect image can be reflected can be seen in and through you. Turn with me to 1 Peter. 1 Peter chapter 1. 1 Peter chapter 1. 
So to be truly glad, there's wonderful joy ahead. Even though you must endure many trials, but it's only for a little while. These trials will show you that your faith is genuine. It's been tested as fire. Tests and purifies gold. Though your faith is far more precious than mere gold. So when your faith remains strong, through many trials, it will bring, bring you much praise and glory and honor on the day when Jesus Christ shall be revealed to the world. There's five lessons we've got to learn in this verse. That every one of us, no matter you're a tither, a giver, a worshiper, an intercessor, whether you are the lead pastor or whether you are the bishop of the house, each one of us will endure trials, will endure testings, will go through hardship and pain, will go through sufferings and trials. But the scripture says it will only last for a little while. Come and tell your neighbor. What you are going through. Is only for a little while. Amen. Amen. Number two. Trials and tests of our faith. Is to see the genuity of our faith. To see whether you are genuine in your Christian belief. When your faith is being tested, when your faith is being tried, when your character is being tested, when your life is going through a trial and a storm, your faith is being tested to see whether you will give up, whether you will throw in the towel, whether you will backslide, whether you will, you will deny your Christian faith. Number three. Your faith is going to be tested by fire as gold is tested by fire. As gold, as the goldsmith tests the raw gold, puts raw gold into fire to be tested, to make it into pure gold, you and I will also go through fire. Amen? So that our faith can be tested in God. Number four. Your faith is more precious than gold. If gold has got to go through intense heat to be purified. How much more heat must you and I go through? Because we are more than gold. Our worth is more than gold. Our value is more than gold. So when you are going through fire and the heat is on, stay in the fire. Tell your neighbor, stay in the fire. Tell your neighbor, stay in the fire. Don't complain. Don't murmur. Don't look for sympathy. Amen. Don't feel the church does not love you. Don't feel God has denied you. When you are going through your fire, stay in the fire. Because your purification for Christ to reflect himself in and through you. For your faith to be tested so that you are genuine. Number five, when your faith remains strong in the midst of trial, death, then Christ will be glorified. Amen? The pain that you're going through, I, sometimes I don't understand. I said to Mama Neela, sometimes I don't understand God. 
But God is not meant to be understood. He's meant to be trusted. Sometimes when you don't see his hand in the workings of your life, learn to trust his heart. But God says, I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. I will be with you even until the end of this age. Psalms 34 verse 19. Psalms 34 verse 19. Many. Say many. many. Say not one. not one. Say not one. not one. You see, God, you cannot look at God through levels because God does not work in levels. God works in dimensions. Amen. Amen. And therefore the Bible says many are the afflictions. If you've gone through one affliction now, get ready. Another one is on the way. When you've come out of the storm, now get ready. Something else is on the way. And many people say it does not rain, but it pours. It says, many are the afflictions, not of the heathen, not of the unrighteous, not of the backslider, not of one that's cold. Many will be the afflictions of those that are righteous. Have you taken note like I explained? When you are righteous, when you start loving God, when you make a determination to come to church, when you make a determination to serve God with, with great passion, that's the time all hell has broken loose on you. Amen? It says many are the afflictions. Many will be your troubles. Many will be your hardship. Many will be your unemployment. Many will be your death. Many are the afflictions of whom? Say, I am righteous. I am righteous. Say, I am righteous. I am righteous. Some of you are not saying I am righteous because you are scared affliction will come. You are not confessing that you are righteous because you are scared that afflictions would come. It says many are the afflictions of the righteous. Say, but the Lord. But the Lord. Say, but the Lord. but the Lord. Come on, raise your right hand and say, but the Lord. But the Lord. But the Lord, but the Lord. delivers me. Out of them all. Hallelujah. No weapon formed against you shall prosper. No tongue raised against you shall stand on the day of judgment. Amen. I like the NLT version. It says, the righteous person faces many troubles. But the Lord comes to his rescue every time. Every time. Every time I'm in trouble, the Lord comes to my rescue. Every time I'm going through my pain, the Lord comes to my rescue. Every time I'm going through my challenge, the Lord comes to my rescue. Even though he allowed it. Even though he is the, uh, the manager of it all. Even though he is the blacksmith in my life. Even though he's holding the fan in his hand. But listen, he comes to rescue me. When I stand firm, when I stand faithful, when I become immovable in God. And when my faith is tested and tried. Amen. God is the proprietor. God is the manager of the furnace. But he uses a lot of agents. Amen. To work out his sovereign will in my life. When you are going through fire. When you are going through your storm. God 
is working out his sovereign will, his divine plan in your life. Amen. God is a number of agents. He uses men. He uses things. He uses circumstances. He uses suffering. He uses diseases. He uses unemployment. He uses death. He uses trouble. He uses hardship. He uses pain. These are some of his agents that's working on his behalf to work out his sovereign will in your life. Amen. You've got to take note that the furnace is divinely appointed and arranged by God. Ah, it's getting quiet. Amen? Amen? It's going to blow your prosperity message, my prosperity teachings out of the window. Amen? God is a God of love, full of mercy, full of kindness. Amen? But for his sovereign purpose to be worked out in your life, for him to shape you and make you a vessel that can bring honor and glory to his name, for, for, for him to make you a kingdom preacher. I said to you the last time, in my last meeting, I gave Pastor Adrian as one of the examples, but I used my own. For God's sovereign purpose and will, for his sovereign purpose and will take, to take place in my life, I ran from God. I did. I never wanted to be a pastor. I never wanted, I felt that it was so good for me to support my father who was the lead pastor. It was so good for me to just serve around his table because I knew what preachers went through. I knew the criticism. I knew the remarks. I knew the scandal. I never wanted to. And if I never obeyed God and never allowed God to work out his sovereign will in my life, you will not be here. Amen. 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 I was running from God. Until God afflicted me. Not even me. Afflicted Mama Nila. Mama Nila went into hospital at the point of death. Amen. Two in the morning. At her bedside. I lifted up my heart to God. And I cried to God. And I said, God, if you would call me again. I will go. I am tired of running like Jonah. And here my wife is lying between life and death because of my disobedience in God. When you become disobedient in God, you will lie in hospital with a heart attack. When you be disobedient in God, you will lie in hospital allowing God to, to get you onto your knees until you confess. And while Neela was lying between life and death, and Meldon was just two years old, Amen. I said, give me one more chance. Just give me one more chance. And if you give me that one chance, I will obey. When Neela came out of surgery, when Neela came out of surgery, and the doctor looked at me and he says, it is a miracle that your wife is still alive. She had hemorrhaging and she would have died. But I said, thank God for my second chance. God is a God of the second chance. Amen. Amen. And two months later, the call came again. The call for full-time ministry came again and I wanted to play hide and seek and Mama Nila says, hey. And you know when Mama Nila looks at you, 
you in trouble. Amen? I obeyed the call. And God thus far, this year, 43 years in ministry. Amen. The furnace is divinely appointed and divinely arranged by God. Your affliction, my affliction, is not the result of chance and blind fate. You are not going through your affliction by chance. It's divinely appointed by God. Job chapter 5 verse 6 says, Afflictions do not rise from the dust. Afflictions are not to be traced as secondary causes. It's not like God had nothing to do. And, 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 and God just allowed you to go through affliction. No, your affliction is not a secondary chance. It's a divine arrangement by the proprietor and the manager of your life. Afflictions are not the works of our enemy. Amen? Afflictions come from the moral government of God. Turn with me to First Thessalonians. First Thessalonians. Chapter 3, we'll read one ver from verses 1 to 5. When we could stand it no longer, we decided to stay alone in Athens. And we sent Timothy to visit you. He is our brother, our co-worker, proclaiming the good news of Christ. Amen. We sent him to strengthen you and to encourage you in your faith. And to keep you from being shaken. By the troubles you were going through. But you know this. That we are all destined for such troubles. Even while we were with you. We warned you that trouble will soon come. And they surely did. And, you, and we all know it. That is why when I could bear it no longer. I sent Timothy to find out whether your faith was still strong in Christ. I was afraid that the tempter had gotten the best of you. That our work had been useless. Oh my God. I want you to go home and read that. Will you do that for me? Amen. Amen. Tell your neighbor and say it aloud. Say neighbor. When I'm in my furnace of affliction. Come and say it aloud. Say it aloud. Say neighbor. When I am in my furnace of affliction. When I'm going through my trouble. When I'm going through death. When I'm going through hardship. Come and say it aloud. When I'm going through hardship. I need a Timothy in my life. I need a Timothy to strengthen me. I need a Timothy to encourage me. I need a Timothy to pray with me. When I'm going through my trouble, I don't need people to come and play a pity party with me. When I'm going through my trouble, I don't need people will come and murmur and complain. When I'm going through my trouble, I don't want people to come in and judge me. When I'm going through my storm, I don't want people to gossip about me. I need a Timothy. Paul said, I sent Timothy to strengthen you. I need Timothy to encourage you. I need Timothy to come and pray with you. When you are going through a storm, 
pray that God sends a Timothy. Amen. Timothy came to strengthen and encourage so that I don't give up, so that I don't quit, so that I don't throw in the towel, so that I don't backslide. When I'm going through my storm, I need my church family to be with me, to keep me from being shaken. Come on, church. The furnace has shaken you. Your storm has rent you to twain. Your storm has shaken you. I need a Timothy by my life to see to it that I am not shaken. That I am immovable. That I am standing firm in my faith when I am going through my troubles. Paul says, even though you know that you have been destined for trouble. Each one of us, there's a trouble behind your name. There is a storm. There is fire. And I came to tell you today, Paul says, I told you that from the day of new birth, you are destined for trouble. You will go through affliction. You will go through trial. You will go through storm. You will go through death. You will go through pain. Amen. Amen. But my prayer for you is that Satan will not get the better of you. That's my prayer for this church. That's my prayer for Neil and I. That's my prayer for Pastor A.D. and his family. My family has gone through storm this week. My prayer is that Satan will not get the better of you. When you are in the storm, don't let Satan get the better of you. When you are in your pain and affliction, don't let Satan get the better of you. Amen. And Paul writes and says, I sent Timothy to see that if you are not shaken and you are still strong in your faith. Amen. To see to it that all that I've taught you all that I've preached to you, it's not useless and it's not in vain. Amen? From this day, make up your mind that you don't need a preacher to lay hands on you to pray for you. Because the word that's preached from this pulpit will have the faith to change your life, to transform your life, to bring healing to your life. Don't let Satan have the better of you. Amen. Amen. Afflictions comes by the wise arrangements and the gracious arrangements of God's divine providence. It's the same God who sends the sunshine and the rain. It's the same God who sends the fire and the pain. Amen. First Samuel, first Samuel chapter 2 verse 7. First Samuel chapter 2 verse 7. It says, the Lord kills. The Lord makes alive. He brings down the one who has gone to the grave. And he rises up the one to life. The Lord sends poverty and he sends wealth. He humbles and he exalts. Isaiah chapter 45 verse 7 says, Jehovah declares, I form the light and create the darkness. I bring prosperity and create disaster. I, the Lord, does all these things. 
Job says, will you only expect good from God? Amen? Amen? Job's wife was scrambling through the pile of dirt. She knew where her children lived. And she knew that these children were under this pile of dirt, scrambling through the dirt. Dusted, torn, emotional wreck. Losing ten children at one go. Lost cattle, lost sheep, and now her children are gone. And while she's scrambling through the dust and through the dirt, hoping to see the bones of her children, she says to Job, why don't you curse God? die. Job had faith to settle his eyes on God. But only a mother knows the pain of losing her children. Emotionally torn. Emotionally wrecked. And then Job looks at her and said, do you expect God only to give us the good and not the evil, God will always allow us to go through some storm, to go through some affliction, so that his faith can be perfected in us. And I came to encourage you today, the storms that you are going through will perfect you and bring you and shape you, make you into a vessel of honor so that you can pass from earth to eternity. Amen? Into your eternal place of rest. Amen? I just want to close with this. It's done. My time is done. We find that Job consoles himself. In Job 23 verse 14 he says, For he performs what is appointed for me, and many such decrees are with him in his hand. David says these words, David suffered much from his enemies and his family, yet he was happy to say, In my times I in your hand. I was silent, I would not open my mouth, for you are the one who has done all these things to me. When Eli was told his family tree would be cut off, Eli said to young Samuel, He is the Lord. Let him do what is good in his sight. Hezekiah, when he was told by the prophet Isaiah that his sons would be eunuchs in the palace of the king of Babylon, Hezekiah replied, the words of the Lord that you have spoken are good 